is so good. Aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. God is so good. Hallelujah. We praise you. You're so worthy. You're so worthy, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I trust in God. Amen. Hallelujah. Trust him this morning with everything you have. Amen. God is so good.
Hallelujah. Welcome to Resurrection Life Church. You can shake hands, be friendly, and be seated. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. Whew. If you're visiting this morning, we welcome you here. You should have got a visitor's um, card to fill out. And if you didn't, the ushers, you can raise your hand and the ushers will be glad to give you one. Also, too, we just welcome you this morning and we'd love for you to pray. If you do not have a home church, we'd love for you to pray about becoming part of ours. Amen. God is so good. We have several things this morning, so if you guys will just follow along in your bulletin. Of course, our youth hayride is today. It's at 6 p.m. until 9, drop off and pick up here at the church. So make sure all of, you, all of your youth are here. We're excited about that. Um, healing service is Sunday, October the 27th, which is today. Amen. So make sure you're prepared and ready to be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to hear and be healed. Amen. Fall festival is November the 3rd, which is next weekend. 4 p.m. until 6.30. Uh, we are looking forward to a great time of food, fun, and fellowship. Please join us. If you are willing to volunteer to help, please sign the sign-up sheet in the foyer. Uh, please begin. Of course, we've already got candy. We got, But please keep bringing it. It takes a lot of candy to get your kids sugared up. Amen? So we want to make sure that they're sugared up, and we're going to send them home to you. Amen? And then it says, please, uh, if you would prefer to donate money, please turn in to uh, Miss Frankie, she will take your money and go buy candy. Amen. So uh, fall festival cakewalk, ha homemade desserts are needed. So if you would please see Morgan about the desserts, we would greatly appreciate that. Um, I think I kind of volunteered Lauren, Lauren told Lauren to buy the pound cake. I don't know. She goes, she makes us pound cake. So uh, anyway, at, voluntold. That's what happens to the preacher's kids. They get voluntold. <laughs> Amen. Uh, we have outreach ministry. A nursing home, an opportunity to spread the love of Jesus. When? Saturday, November the 9th at 10.30 a.m. Carlisle Nursing Home, formerly Sunny Acres. If you guys are going to go go there, um, are y'all going to meet here? Or are y'all just going to meet at the nursing home? Meet at the nursing home at 10.30. Okay, so they, they're excited. These guys really love to see you guys. And um, they they called and wanted to know. I uh, know Gwen called me and she said, I just want to let you know I just got a call from the nursing home. And I think me and her both were like, oh, Lord, <laughs> what happened? So anyway, but she said, no, they just, they're, they wanted to know when they were coming back. So they're excited. It really blesses them. They get to sing, and they just get to have fellowship, and it's just a wonderful time, and they get to learn about Jesus. It's just, it's just awesome. So they, you know, a lot of people, like I've said before, they just get left there, and nobody ever comes sees them again or anything like that. So it does them good when you guys go. So we appreciate that so much. Um, we have our dream team meeting. Sunday, November the 10th at 2 p.m. And our men's fellowship, Fish Fry, is Saturday, November the 16th, 12 to 2 p.m. So make sure you guys are here for that, for the fish. So uh, the church will provide the chicken and fish. Sign up sheet in the foyer. You guys just get it all, don't you? There's fish and chicken and everything. Amen? No, we're excited. You guys are growing in the Lord. And speaking of fellowships, we had our ladies' fellowship yesterday. We miss you if you weren't there. But um, we had a really good time everything went great um the food was awesome of course as always and but we um we talked about rejoice always in the lord you always have something to rejoice about first of all jesus lives on the inside of you you have the fruit of the spirit to stir up the joy on the inside of you and um, it was just a good time in the lord we talked about um the the joy of the lord and how you've responded in different situations and different times you know so it was really good but also to miss dana she um she had us a craft, you know Dana. She's crafty, <laughs> and uh, so she had us. She made us. We did a just a Bible tassel. So we made these yesterday at our ladies' fellowship, and they are. I love mine. I hook it on my Bible, and my Bible's purple. That's why I put purple. Well, well, my Bible cover is purple. Carly wants one. <laughs> you want one? Oh, you can have mine. You can. It's got flowers and gold and glitter. <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> but we we enjoyed making these yesterday and just enjoyed each other's fellowship and we had a really good time and I just want you ladies to know that I love you and I appreciate you and I'm so thankful for the relationships that the Lord is building in our ladies fellowships amen uh, we had we had Miss Morgan's mom came yesterday so we got to meet her and so we just had a really good time she brought the baby and we loved on her you know all the ladies love the babies so we loved on her but anyway we love you guys we appreciate you um, Alex is coming to receive the tithes and offerings Day. Amen. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Uh, 
as she said, you know, I'm taking up the uh, tithe and the outreach, the same offering this morning. So if you will, um, just label everything accordingly, put it in the envelope, just make sure you put it in all In the uh, Second Kings four uh, one through seven, there's a, a story of this woman who was the wife of a servant to the wife of a servant to Elisha, and she comes in uh, Second Kings four one and says, "Now the wife of a son of the prophet cried to Elisha, your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that your servant feared the Lord, but the creditor has come to take my two sons to be his slaves." Elisha said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? She said, your handmaid has nothing in the house except for a jar of oil. Then he said, go around and borrow vessels from all of your neighbors, empty vessels, and not a few. And when you come in, shut the door upon you and your sons. Then pour out all the oil you have into all those vessels, setting aside each one when it is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon herself and her sons, who brought the vessels um, to her as she poured the oil. When the vessels were all full, she said to her son, bring me another vessel. He said to her, there is not a one left. Then all the oil stopped multiplying. Then she came to and told the man of God, he said, go and sell the, uh, the oil and pay your debt, and you, are, you and your sons um, will live on the rest. So we as believers desire to be blessed by God. However, some of us lean on our own understanding, which directly contradicts Proverbs 3, 5, which tells us to trust in the Lord with all of our heart and lean not into our own understanding, which causes us to make no preparation to receive. Tithing and giving is our preparation to receive. As gathering the vessels for oil was preparation for the woman in the passage, we, in doing so, are being doers of the word, not hearers only. So, if you will, let's say our prayer together as we prepare to give. Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. I thank you for the privilege and opportunity to bring my tithes and offerings into the storehouse. You said in your word that if I would tithe, that you would open the windows of heaven and pour me out a blessing there is not room enough to receive. I thank you that right now, as I act on and obey your word, that the windows of heaven are opened up and the blessings of God are abounding in my life. I receive them now by faith.
Pray. 
just praise you this morning and glorify you. We thank you, Father, for your word. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for the precious shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, Father, that's washed us and cleansed us from our sins, Father, today, Father. We thank you, Father, we have been redeemed. We have been justified just as if we'd never sinned because we thank you. You out of your love gave the Lord Jesus Christ, your only son. Thank you, Father, our Lord and Savior, to meet the claims of justice, to pay the price that only an innocent sacrifice could pay. He paid the price, Father, to redeem us, to heal us, to set us free, to deliver us. And today, we can stand here and give you the praise, glory, and honor because our standing has been restored. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He's our access this morning. We can go freely boldly and confidently this morning and we do to the throne of grace to obtain all the grace all the mercy everything that we need all the help we need in time of need we have it we love you this morning father and we come to you in jesus name we thank you father you set aside this day and father we know we can really call every service this bible because your words of truth are words of healing we could call every service a healing service but, Father, today you have a special plan. There are some that's been in the heat of the battle. There are some that sensed and felt as if, though, they've been in the pit. That it didn't matter what they seemed, what they tried to do. It seemed like they could gain no ground. But we thank you today in Christ Jesus. As we place our faith and trust in you, and we give you the praise, honor, and glory you so deserve, you're turning those things around. We thank you today, Father. It's a day to praise you. It's a day to worship you. It's a day to glorify you. And we're going to do just that. So now I thank you, Father, for this particular message, for this group of people. You're the one that knows what they need. As I open my eyes in a moment in this Bible, you're going to lead and guide me by the Spirit of God to share what needs to be shared. And their minds, their hearts and minds are open to receive. They're going to receive it and not only apply it when they leave, but we're going to apply it and act on it before we leave today. Because there's power in praise. So we thank you today is going to be different, but it's 100% at your direction. So as we step out now to obey you, we thank you, Father that as we act on the word, we'll receive the results of doing so. And at the last, amen. These lives will be changed, challenged, and altered forever, never to be the same again. But we thank you, Father, above all else. Everything that's said and done will give you the glory, you the honor, and you the praise you so deserve. We count it done by faith. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You can be seated for a few minutes there. We're not done praising God today. There's some things that I do want to share with you. First, this came probably Tuesday or Wednesday. The Lord was dealing with me about this message one morning. And I don't like to call any service a generic or one size fits all. But wherever you are or whatever you're facing today and whatever you're dealing with, if you'll listen to these words and then act on it, I can assure you the word will work and that you'll not leave here like you came in Jesus' name because the word always works. The word's always good. It's the way we pray, but we pray that way because we pray in line with the word. The word of God has within it the ability to change and alter the course and direction of your life forever. So we pray and set our faith before we come. And of course, you have to, as Brother Hagin used to say, he said, if you want to move with God, you just got to find out how God's moving. The Holy Spirit will help you do so and then cooperate, move with him. Amen. That's how we follow the Holy Ghost. The title of this message that I'm going to share with you for a few minutes, you know, he sent his word. What is it? Luke 5, 15 or so. He sent his word and he what? Healed him. In Psalms 107, 20, we know he sent his word. He did what? He healed us and delivered us in that passage. But we, you can go to Psalms 37, and, and I got wrote down all of it, but I'm not going to read it all. But just go ahead there. And if you title in this, it's going to be the power of praise. Did you know you can praise your way to victory? I said you can praise your way to, to victory. 
as I was getting gas this morning, I already had this message, but the Lord was speaking to me and he said, it's no coincidence that you'll never find a happy complainer. That's what he said when I was pumping gas. So if y'all want the Holy Ghost, go to the Murphy after church and stand there and wait for him to talk to you. And if you got cheaper gas somewhere else, go there so you can be a good steward. He said, you'll never find a happy complainer. And that's not coincidence. And the reality of it is, is you'll never find an unhappy praiser. Might not be proper English, but it's still true. You'll also find, this is what he said, it'll help you. The area you complain in the most will always be the area you're exercising your faith the least. And that's good. I thought that was real good. God's pretty smart, isn't he? The area you complain in the most will always be the area you're exercising your faith in the least. Because what does faith speak? What does faith say? What's the language of faith? Well, it's God's word. Nelson says this about the word praise, and I'm, start, I'm starting now. It says our praise toward God is the means by which we express our joy. And as we'll see, praise and joy go together. It's the means by which we express our joy to the Lord. We are to praise God both for who he is and for what he does. Psalms 150 verse 2. You can read it when you get home. Praising God for who he is is called adoration. Praising God for what he does is known as thanksgiving. Praise of God may be in song or prayer, individually or collectively, spontaneous or prearranged. The godly person will echo David's words. He said, my praise shall be continually of you. Continually means how often? This is my life. Even when things are bad in the earth, bad in the world, and even situations and circumstances may be bad in your life, God is still good and is still worthy to be praised. Because whatever you're facing, he is well able to bring you out. My praise shall be continually of you. And he said, I will praise you yet more and more today. God has provided us all we need in and through Christ Jesus, right? Just hold your place where you are and go to Psalms 103. I'm not going to read all this, but it do you good to read it when you get home? Or often. He said in one, Psalms 103, bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. In Christ, we have a benefit package. It's available now. This morning, he said, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, you're forgiven. In Christ, who healeth all our diseases. In Christ, we're healed. Who redeemeth my life from destruction. We've been redeemed. We've been delivered. Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfieth your mouth with the good things so that your youth is renewed like eagles. Verse 8, the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. And you can read it all. He takes pleasure in your failure, in your lack. He takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants, right? We know if we went over to Philemon, we are to acknowledge our faith is active or effective as we acknowledge every good thing that's in us in Christ Jesus. You say, I don't know how I feel, but you don't know what God said, right? We're saved, healed, blessed, delivered, and so much more. The enemy wants to rob you of your inheritance, or I guess you could say walking in it, and from walking in God's best for your life. He operates from the outside in with thoughts, circumstances, situations, and honestly, even through other people that are yield to him. His goal is to get you to doubt God's promises so you will walk in his best. I need you to listen to this because this is how this message came about. This is what the Lord said to me. He said, when he was talking to me about this message, he said, there are some people, he said, you've lost your laugh. 
and it's time to get it back. You remember Abraham and Sarah and God. God made them a seemingly impossible, unbelievable promise at 190 that you, Sarah's going to have a child. What was Abraham's initial response? What was Sarah's initial response? Both of them laughed. You can write down Genesis 17, 17. That's where Abraham laughed. In Genesis 18, 12, that's where Sarah laughed. And then finally, after quite a few years, they really got in faith and God delivered. They had a little mess there to begin with, with Hagar and Ishmael, but still they got it right. And Isaac was born. And I want you to see after they got back in faith, who had the last laugh? God did. Isaac was born. Do you know what Isaac means in the Hebrew? Isaac's name in the Hebrew means laughter. That's what it means. You look it up for yourself. It means laughter. So God made them a promise that seemed impossible, that seems hard to believe. He made them this promise that this is what I'm going to do for you. And it seems so far-fetched, so far from being possible, so far. There's no way. Maybe you're here this morning and God's shown you some things and impressed upon your spirit, direction or promise or vision. And it looks further away than ever to the degree that like Abraham and Sarah, you wouldn't do it publicly, but you almost would laugh about it. But see, God is able. I said, God is able. I'm not talking about not having problems. I'm talking about knowing your God who's bigger than all your problems. I remember when my daddy, 20 years ago this December, he was my spiritual father and my earthly father. I remember, I'll never forget it because I worked this message unknowingly. I didn't know the passages that I know now by any means 20 years ago, but I went to the church. It seemed like everything was coming down all around us. And I mean, I felt like that there were mountains everywhere all around us and there was really no way to go daddy who we was praying and believing God we didn't know the full story didn't know he was going to check out of here and was ready to go we found out afterwards he didn't fight at all for different reasons it's between him and God but he checked on out of here at 49 years old but it just got to where it sometimes you ever been there it's like things just get on top of you and you got to do something about it I like to be on top of things that's God's plan you deal with things but you're supposed to be on the mountaintop the mountain's not supposed to be over you, on top of you. But I felt that way. I'm t- I said felt that way. And, and I went to the church and I got up on the stage and I'll never forget it. As I began to walk back and forth, just like I can on this stage, as I began to pray and praise God and pray in the Holy Ghost. And he just encouraged me. Oh, God is so good. For the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. And as I praised him, the mountains did not disappear. That's not what happened. We still had things to deal with. But as the mountains were all around and it seemed like I was in circled and all around me was the mountains and there was no way to go as I praise God he inhabits the praises of his people and his presence is fullness of joy and the more that I praise him I might have started down in the valley I might have started in the pit and did I see it with my natural eyes no but I might have started down low but as I praise God he lifted me up and before I knew it I was on top of the mountains they were still there but I was looking down and I could move forward by faith and gain new ground and that's nothing but working the word. That's all it is. Let's go do this morning. It may often seem like the enemy will get the victory over you, but if you'll continue to trust God, you and God can get the last laugh. Right? I'm not going to read all of this, but Psalms 37, I wrote down all, but I'm not reading all of it. It talks in verse 1 about fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. And that word fret not means to be hot, to be furious, to burn with anger. You may be that way this morning about some different situations if you've been mistreated, but just know every person, you can't wish it, you can't will it, and you can't make it happen. Every person will reap what they sow if they don't repent. So you just give them to God. We've taught you that. But he said in verse 4, delight thyself also in the Lord. He'll give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he'll bring it to pass. He shall bring forth, forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord. Wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Verse 8, cease from anger and forsake 
wrath, fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. I didn't plan on reading all that. Go on down to verse uh, uh, 13. The, it talks about in verse 12, the wicked plotteth against the just and all these things. But it says here in 13, the Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. It doesn't matter what work the enemy is endeavoring to do in the earth or in your life. We have the book of promise. We have the book of covenants. We know the end from the beginning. Satan's leash is running out, and thanks be unto God who's given us the victory in yourself in the economy, in the election, you say those things matter. Yeah, they matter in a measure. But thanks be unto God who gives us the victory in and through our Lord Jesus Christ. We are victorious today in Christ. Now talking about laughing, I didn't come here to play games and try to make everybody laugh today. But laughter, as you study this out, laughter is a show or a revealer of the joy inside of you. Joy is of the heart, and as a result, we know it's one of the fruit of the Spirit, it's a result of abiding in the vine. Now, I'm not, I've been in some of these services before where people tell people to do the crazy dance and laugh when I come up to you. You say, what do you think? Dum, dum, dum. Do stuff by the Holy Ghost, the Spirit, from the inside out. You don't tell people how to respond to God's Spirit. That's ignorant. Amen. Some people laugh, some people cry, some people dance, some people fall to their knees. All I care is they receive. Why does anybody care how they react? I mean, if they start jumping on somebody else, we'll try to get you off of them. We respect each other, right? We tell them that we come pray. We don't care how you pray, but, you know, when you're walking around, you're going to have to at least pick so you don't walk into each other. If you got five of you walking, you got to use common sense and wisdom at the same time. But my, joy, my effort here to this morning in Christ through this word is not to try to get you to laugh or to holler or to scream or anything, but to get you a note of victory as we step out and praise God. Amen. Romans 15, 13, write it down, says, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Right? Faith in God and his word will always produce joy and peace in the life of the believer. We can look back at Acts 27. We remember Paul and those in the storm. I use that probably as much as anything. In 20, all hope that they should be saved was taken away. But Paul had been with Jesus. Paul had listened to the Holy Ghost. God had sent an angel and spoke to Paul. And what did he say? Wherefore, sirs, do what? In the storm, be of good cheer. Where had Paul been? In God's presence. In the storm, he had good cheer. In the storm, he had the joy of the Lord. This is why this is a little bit different today than we usually do on a healing service, because this is what the Lord told me. He said, some today already believe the message of healing and deliverance. But Satan has robbed you of your joy, and it's time to get it back. Amen? Romans 14, 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace, and joy, where? In the Holy Ghost. The kingdom of God is righteousness, and peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Psalms 22, 3 says, But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. Now that was God's people then, but who, who are God's children now? Everybody that's redeemed in Christ. God inhabits the praises of his people. That's why people say it doesn't matter what you do at church, one way or the other. God's going to do what he wants to do. No, the Holy Ghost is the perfect gentleman. And as I, we say in prayer, and I talk about this all the time, there's, there's nothing we can do to make God do anything. People say when we teach faith, you're endeavoring to make, no. You don't make God do anything. You're just believing God because you've gotten the word. You don't have to make him. He's already willing because you got to know God's will. If you're not sure it's God's will, you can't be in faith anyways. We're not twisting God's arm and getting the spirit of God to move. Our responsibility is to create an atmosphere with honor, with respect, to make sure praise and worship, to make sure the message, to make sure everything we do is in line with the word. 
People say, well, this is my way and this is their way. This is the other way. Well, I'm not interested in none of those ways. I want to know God's way. Another message, but the Lord was dealing with me about that this past week too. A lot of people throw this blanket out there and say, well, you believe this and I believe that. That's what the Lord said to me. He said, it's not what you believe the Bible says that will change your life. It's what it actually says. That's what he told me this week. That's good too. He said, it's not what you believe the Bible says. He said, well, I've been believing for 42 years and, and nothing's changed. Well, you need to make sure that what you're believing God for is in line with the word. Because it's not what you believe the Bible says that will change your life. It's what it actually says. Get in there and find out for yourself. Amen? I tell you all the time, don't take my word for it. Take his word for it. Right? So thou art holy that inhabitest the praises of his people. That's scriptural. Psalms 22.3 says, well, we just read that. Praising God will always manifest the presence of God in your life. And while it works here in the church this morning, it works God at the, in the house. It works in the car. Amen? Complaining, doubting, being negative will actually remove the presence of God from your life. Just write it down. We know one of them, Ephesians 4.30, tells us to grieve or quench not the Spirit of God. We can do things to stir up the gift. We can do things to create an atmosphere where he inhabits our what? Our praises, right? Or we can do things that quench the Spirit of God, primarily things in the flesh. Psalm 16.11 says, Thou will show me the path of life, and this is what he said, in thy presence is fullness of joy. We again see whether it's Paul in the storm, whether it's Romans 15, whether it's Romans 14 we just read, whether it's Psalm 1611, we see joy connected to the presence of God. We see God's presence being where he is praised. Amen? God's word translation on verse 11 there. Psalm 16 says, you make the path of life known to me. It says, complete joy is in your presence. He would say, you're just not telling the truth. You don't know what's going on in my life. You need to establish this as the truth. Jesus said, the words that I speak, they are truth. They are life. It said, complete joy is in your presence. Pleasures are by your side forever. Good news Bible says, you will show me the path that leads to life. It says, your presence fills me with joy. We once again see joy. I know that's the same passage, just worded differently. Joy tied to the presence of God. Amen? And the presence of God shows up where? Yes. Where you praise God. Y'all are listening. I'm doing two things, three things at one time. Second Corinthians, you've noticed this before. It can happen this morning if you'll cooperate with God. Second Corinthians chapter 3 tells us this is how we walk with God. It, it, it teaches sanctification and, and many other things, but I'm just pointing out one thing here this morning. You don't just need verse 17 normally. You need at least 17 and 18, but verse 17 says, Now the Lord is that spirit... And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is bondage. There's weightiness. There's holding you down and back. Nah, what Acts 10, 38 say? God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed as push, that pushed down, right? Oppressing, that's what it means to treat harshly. It means to push down. Jesus Christ came to lift us up. Restore and secure our standing. 
I'm going to be honest with you this morning. If we understood the, the jest of just being children of God, it, if it, just what he's already done, if the only thing you had to look at and hope for and be thankful in your life is that you are a Christian and you have been saved from death, hell, and the grave in Christ, you got enough to thank God for the rest of your life to say, look what the Lord has done. And I'm not belittling your present tense, inheritance, and present possessions, but listen, it's not God's will. But if you just scrape through to the end of your life, you should thank God that you possess everlasting, eternal life, Zoe life of God in Christ Jesus. You're not just going to live forever somewhere. You're going to live forever in the presence of the king. We got a lot to be thankful for. And many have not been thankful because our focus is on the wrong thing. It's on the report of the world. What has God said? I know that I make it. I know that today, tomorrow, next week, month, or year, there's nothing I can face that's greater than God. Nothing. Many say that's just talk. It's just talk till you need to apply it. And then when you apply it and it works, it's not just talk. It works every time you do it. And you already know when you step out to obey God, the devil's a persistent cuss. Any preacher stands up and tells you there'll be no problems in life is really telling you just to say you sold to the devil. That's the only problem you know you're going to miss out on. Because when you choose to walk with God, you're going to have to walk by faith. Because he's going to endeavor to trip you up, be a stumbling block, and to cause you to forfeit or give up what God's promised you. That's a fact too. But we have the victory. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I've been in services, and probably almost all of you, if not all of you, have been in services where you came in a certain way, and everything was, you were dealing with different things. Maybe nobody knew about it, but regardless of the way the service went, because the Holy Ghost seldom moves the same way twice. I found that out too. That's why we can't mimic what we've done from the past and go with God. It doesn't work that way. You got to know what he's doing today, right? Many people have got off on the messages horribly, even some of the people that we follow behind. They don't realize, even like when Brother Hagin come along, we're supposed to take his messages, we're supposed to take them, apply them, and run with it. But he come along where there's a lack of certain things in the body. God anointed him to come to this side to bring us out of the ditch where we was over here lacking. But if you only stay with just what Brother Hagin was anointed to preach, where you might would have been balanced then, you'll be out of balance over here. You say, was this message out of balance? No, but you need to know what the Holy Ghost is saying in the hour, at the present tense moment. Yes, we needed what he said then, and many of those truths continue to apply, but they can't apply to the pushing out or neglecting other truths. That's what the Lord told me even about following Brother Hagin. You say, you still read behind him? All the time. I hadn't found a book, bad book he's got yet. I know Rodney was reading The Believer's Authority and How to Be Led by the Spirit of God. And I told him, in my personal opinion, those are textbooks. You keep going back to those. They'll never grow old. But you can't just major on one thing. You got to know what the Spirit of God is saying to you today. It's the same way in the services. This is what he wants to do today. And he said, where the Spirit of the Lord is, I'm still at Psalms 35, that won't work. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. There's freedom, right? In his presence. I can't count the times that I've come in way down. Many things going on. And thank God for ministers that obeyed the word and obeyed the spirit and they allowed the Holy Spirit to flow. And you might, everything out here might not have changed while you was in the service. But the spirit of God met you there. His presence was there. And you knew God was with you. And you knew God was for you. All those things are biblical to begin with, whether you feel like it or not. But it's important to hear from the Holy Ghost today. It's important to know what the Spirit of God is saying to you and I and to us this morning. Because if we'll partake of it, there'll be a liberty and a freedom that you didn't have. You know, think about different people. I think this morning, I was talking to Mr. Johnny, I was thinking about him. And if the, the stuff right today would have been Miss Mary's birthday, is that correct? Yeah. You see, and people's going through things all around you might not think about. 
People's dealing with things that they can feel like they're the loneliest they've ever been. But see, not just us can love Mr. Johnny, but the Spirit of God is with him, and he's never alone no matter where he goes, and he knows there's going to be a great reunion. His days of pork chops is not over. But I use Mr. Johnny because we love him and we pray for him. But it's something we got to get in tune with. We're going to walk in the love of God. If we're going to have a move of the Spirit of God, that's why we talk about love so much. You say, I want to see God move. You want to see who move? God, God is. You're not going to be out of love and see God move. Forget it. You're not going to mistreat everybody and see God move. It's not going to happen. You say, I'm rising up for a move of God while we're stepping on other people to get there. Forget it. Don't worry about it. We're going to walk in the love of God, right? Say, none of us have arrived, but you've got to be on the right path. You've got to be headed in the right direction, and we are. Aren't you? Yes. Romans chapter 4, verse 20, we mentioned Abraham and Sarah. I'm not going to read all of this. Don't have time because I'm fixing to give you opportunity to respond, whether you stay in the crowd or come to the altar. Just listen to the Spirit of God today. Romans 4, verse 20, this is over in the New Testament, obviously, but it's about back there, Genesis 17, 18, Abraham, Isaac, and, and Sarah, and, and God. Romans 4, 20, talking about Abraham's faith, said he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. He was strong in the faith. How could his faith be seen as strong? Because he was facing something that seemed impossible? Because other people looked and would say, you are crazy, Abraham. I don't know what he did, but you know, I never have done this, but I remember when I used to work at, at Blumenthal, them guys would have a baby or something, they'd bring the cigars in and pass them out. I'd take them home, Miss Laura, they'd smoke them. <laughs> I'm just seeing if y'all's awake. <laughs> she liked them big fat ones. I'm just, I'm just playing. I'll just see, so I was trying to get y'all some natural joy to lube you up for the joy of the Lord. <laughs> but they bring those things in there, you know, and they pass it out. He got a little new baby. You know, I, I'm thinking, I doubt Abraham probably, he probably didn't buy none for a while. He's thinking, I'm 100 and she's 90. I know what God said, but we, we might not need the cigars. But it says he was strong in the faith, giving glory to God. What does strong faith do? Well, it glorifies God. It says this may be big, but God is greater. This may seem impossible, but with God it's possible. Strong, all these things are tied together. Strong faith glorifies God and his word. It does not magnify and glorify the problem or the opposition. Happy Caldwell, by faith, on faith, to me, he gave one of the best. People say, you're just denying the reality. He said, we're not, faith doesn't deny the reality. It doesn't deny that there's a problem. It just denies it by faith in God's word, the right to exist, the right to stay, the right to take over, because we believe the word no matter the problem. So what do we see? We see faith expresses itself by giving God the glory, the honor, and the praise he deserves. As we praise God, we can expect to enjoy, enjoy his presence. And we saw it tied with his presence and with the spirit of God is his joy. Praising God is how we welcome the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Praising God is how we welcome the presence and power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. I'm not going there, but if we went to Acts 16, we will go there. Just look at this. I'm, I'm about done with my teaching. Acts 16, you remember Paul and Silas, right? They have run up with this woman that has a, a demon spirit, a spirit of divination until Paul is grieved and he's annoyed and, and he turned around and he said in verse 18, he said, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her and he came out the same hour. 
Well, people were making money off of this demon spirit in this woman because she was a soothsayer and doing all this stuff, and she was, they were making money. Well, when this lady was set free, she no longer had this evil gift to make them money, so they were not happy at all. You'll find that out when you go to walking with God and casting out all the devils. You'll find out there'll be people that don't want the devil cast out. So you need to be ready for that too. But of course, let's read 20. And brought them to the magistrate saying, these men being Jews exceedingly trouble our city. 21, teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. The multitude rose up together. People say, I want unity. Well, not always. In your life, yeah. But, but the multitude rose up together. You don't want them in unity against you and God. <laughs> yeah. Even though you still win. It's still not fun in the process, right? They rose up together against them, and the magistrates ran off their clothes, commanded to beat them. When they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them in the prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. Who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. So Paul and Silas are in prison, lock stocks and bonds for fulfilling the Great Commission. Not because of their own sin. They did exactly what they were commissioned to do in the name of Jesus with the word and the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, what would have been the natural thing? What a lot of people would do. Well, God, I followed you and I obeyed you and look where it got me. They were committed to God. It didn't matter what came, they trusted God to see them through. What did they do in this midnight hour? The Bible says it was at midnight, but it may just be the midnight hour in your life. I want you to see what they did in the results. It said, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed, not complained, murmured, or griped. They prayed, and they sang praises unto God, not quietly, we know, because the prisoners heard them. They were the freest prisoners locked in the prison that was there. Suddenly, after they prayed and sang praises unto God, there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison awaking out of his sleep, seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice saying, do thyself no harm for we are all here. This guy took his job so seriously, he had been charged and entrusted to keep the prisoners in Paul and Silas. And when they were set free because they prayed and sang praises unto God, he's fixing to kill himself. Don't think praising God in the storm only affects you. You say, I want to be a witness. Well, you need to get a praise in your mouth. It comes from your heart, but you need to get a praise in your mouth. This guy was going to kill himself. What happened, though? Not only, Paul said, don't do yourself any harm. We're all here. We're not running. We're not running scared. They already knew the worst thing could happen to them is die and instantly be with Jesus in heaven. This guy that was going to kill himself asked Paul and Silas, he said, what must I do to be saved? They're praying and praising God in the midnight hour had an impact on those around them, even those that were not their friends. This guy would have been, you know, you'd imagine the, the, the person that was keeping you imprisoned may not be your best friend by nature of the flesh anyways. He said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you and your house shall be saved. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night, washed their stripes, baptized them, he and his, he and all his, and straight, his straight way. And when he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them and rejoiced. Again, we see faith, believing in God with all his house. So what happened? When Paul and Silas praised God in the storm, in the midnight hour, what happened? Not only did they get set free, those with them got set free, and the jailer and the jailer's whole house was saved because they chose to praise God in the midnight hour. It's time for some of you today to get your joy back. I didn't have to give you all the scriptures on deliverance and on all these other things. I didn't have to do that. reason why is because the Lord said you already knew that was his will. 
You just got to act on what you already know this morning. Isaiah 61 says, this is what the Lord wants to do. So whoever's going to be on the worship team, you come back up here now. Isaiah 61, 1 says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel, good tidings unto the meek, sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Kind of sounds like Luke 4, 18, right? Talking about Jesus, but we also are commissioned to do the same thing. To proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. To proclaim, proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Now we know that God inhabits the praises of his people. We know that in his presence is fullness of joy. So if we want to sense the presence of God, where the Spirit of God is, there's liberty. If we want to activate the liberty and freedom that is already a present possession in Christ, what do we need to do this morning? We need to praise him. We need to thank God. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you for your son. Thank you for the blood. Thank you that I'm a child of God. Thank you that you've healed me. Thank you that you've delivered me. And what I want you to do is I, you say we could just do this at the seat. Well, I just see this stuff in the spirit, and I just do what the Lord tells me to do. So I don't know that there'll be any kind of words given this morning, but as we step out into this in just a minute, I want you to set your faith for what you need today. And before you come to the altar, I don't care if it's just, your joy being restored come praising him before you come set your faith and say this morning i'm going to praise you and i thank you that you inhabit the praises of your people and in your presence is full of joy and i might have lost my laugh but i'm getting it back this morning because this morning the holy ghost said i wanted to close this part on this he said he's going to give you the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness there's some that's had a spirit of heaviness that the enemies tried to put on you but we thank god we're the right spirit where the holy ghost is there is a liberty and there is a freedom and we have been entrusted and equipped and empowered with the same holy ghost the same anointing that breaks every yoke of bondage just as jesus went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil were to be found doing the same works and even greater and mighty works because he's gone to the father and he's given us the present tense holy spirit on the inside of us and he's anointed us with the holy ghost and power and we thank god this morning we're trained the spirit of heaviness for a garment of praise and we thank god today where the spirit of god is there's liberty stand to your feet so if you're here today and what i don't care i'm not gonna do different altar calls especially right now but you say yes that's me and i just need a touch from god or you say yes that's me in this area it's kind of endeavored to get on top of me and i feel like that i've been in bondage you're gonna set your faith and you're gonna say i thank god when i go down today i'm gonna thank god that i've been delivered i've been set free and where the spirit of god is there is supernatural liberty maybe a sickness and disease in your body and you already know that by the stripes of jesus you have been healed you come down today and you set your faith and you say when miss Lee and pastor jason lay their hands on me i believe god that i receive my healing and you just thank him that it's done and we thank god that you're anointed and well equipped equipped to run the race that he's called you to run. Now, there's many more of you, so you might as well come on down. Let's praise God together. Father, we thank you, and we glorify you, and we magnify you, and we honor you today. For you're so good, you're so worthy, you're so glorious, you're so mighty. And we thank you Every today for that anointing. God, that you're with the Lord. Every that you're word of Lord. Yes. Yes. With thank you for the anointing, the joy, the Every joy, praise. supernatural. Right Every now,
service so I don't I'm not going to try to make you do anything never have but when they start back in just a minute I just want all of us to praise God this is we're going to lay hands on everybody that wants hands laid upon them but we're praising God this morning for his goodness mercy and grace whether you come down here or not so we're going to take a few minutes and praise God we're not trying to rush through this so we can just be done and go to something else we're supposed to praise God a few minutes there at least so let's just do so Go ahead back, and we're going to praise the Lord together. Father, we praise you, and we glorify you, and we magnify you for you so good. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That's it. The anointing, joy, 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 and peace in believing in the Holy Ghost. Right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yeah.
Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise your holy and mighty name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise your holy and mighty name. Now, I've been doing this for a couple years now, and I've learned just a couple things. And I want you to listen to me before I say what I'm fixing to say. I'm not trying to rush anything, but I'm not going to drag anything out either. So when I say what the Holy Spirit tells me to say, if it's you, you need to make a deliberate decision and respond accordingly because we want to minister to you. I'm not going to ask you any details, but there's somebody here today, you've run up to an end. Don't know if it's your fault, somebody else's fault, the devil's fault, whoever it is, but you've run up to an end. You don't see any way around, any way through, any way over. The Lord said he wants us today to minister to you because the anointing is here to speak to you and to minister to you. So if you sense that that's where you are, nobody's going to give you a microphone, and I'm not going to ask you what you're dealing with, but these things come by the Spirit of God, and we're going to move into these places. So you might as well get used to it and get ready because it's going to be more specific as we move forward. So if that is you and you want us to minister to you and pray for you, come down now and we'll be glad to. It don't even have to be anything bad. You can be trying to move forward in the plan of God for your life and not see anything past today. We'll minister to you. Go ahead, Jennifer. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's praise God. Glorify you. Magnify you today for you're so good. God you're so worthy. Yes.
I reward you on the outside. So as you give to me what I ask for, in essence, what is happening is I'm making room for more on the inside to come on the outside and change this world just like you so desire to begin with. For I've given you the call and you've committed to the call, but now even greater commitment is required. And I'll speak to you here and you'll know when you get there, which will be many different places, you'll know that you know that you know what to say, what to do, and which way to go. And my spirit in a greater measure than at any other time in your life He'll flow. And the liberty that you enjoy and possess, you'll be a vessel for others to enjoy and possess. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for you to be one of those spouts that's poured it out. Yield, 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 yield to me. And what you've asked for shall be in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, and praise your holy and mighty name. You're so good. You're so worthy. You're so mighty. You're so wondrous. We glorify you. We honor you today. Magnify you. You're so worthy. You're so glorious. Y'all get, get done with us. We praise you and glorify you and magnify you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're so worthy. You're so glorious. Just praise him for a few minutes. I promise he's better than your chicken sandwich. We glorify you. We magnify you. And we honor you this morning. For you're so good. You're so worthy. Praise your holy and mighty name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Get prepared because this is a major part of what you're going to be doing in heaven. Giving God the glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise. Let's sing together. We glorify you. We just exalt you, Father. Praise your holy and mighty name. Thank you, Father, and praise your holy and mighty name. Thank you, Father. We glorify you. We magnify you. We honor you this morning, Father. We glorify you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Somebody here that you keep saying, I wish I'd have came. I wish I'd have went out. You still come down now. We'll still pray for you. Come on. Thank you, Father. We exalt you, Father. We praise you, Father. We glorify you for that anointing that breaks every yoke of bondage, everything that would bind, everything that would hinder. Father, we thank you, Father, for the Holy Ghost. We thank you for the Holy Ghost this morning. We thank you for the precious shed blood. Thank you, Father. Praise your holy and mighty name. Praise you, Father. Praise your holy and mighty name. We glorify you. We magnify you. We honor you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And praise your holy and mighty name. We just glorify you. We just glorify you. We just glorify you. And we just magnify you.
fullness of your destination. Have you ever been anywhere? And even though you got packed in a measure, maybe it was in haste. You left behind something that you needed. Then when you got to the place, you had lack. Well, I'm preparing you right now to run the race that I've called you to run. To fulfill the plan of God for your life. It's a plan that you would say without question. You know what I measure. But I'm going to let you know in part. As I do with everybody. So as you believe me where you are, and trust me where you are, know this morning, on this day, I'm ensuring that you're packed for the trip, and you'll be ready to go and to flow and to walk my way. And then I'll put the words in your mouth, and you know what to say. And I'll prompt you in your spirit, and you know what to do. And through my word and my spirit, I'll lead and guide you, and not only you, but others will be changed as well. And they'll never be the same. But know what you're doing at the moment in the spirit as you're getting back. That's not the same thing as you've heard lately. With seeds on your shoulder that you're not sowing, that's not the same thing. These are spiritual impartations and deposits and transference of my anointing of my spirit that you not only receive, but to take with you where you go and to bring back also. So know this morning that you're been packed up. So when you get there, you'll have a smile on your face, a pep in your step, and a glide in your stride, because you'll know I have everything I need to run the race that God's called me to run. So I place my anointing upon you. You know, and others will see. It'll be as I told you. But just yield and listen to me this day, for I'm moving and I'm working in ways that are unseen, in ways that in the natural are known, but they're not here. They're not here. It bears witness with your spirit, even though you don't know what's being done. It bears witness with your spirit that I'm moving and that I'm working. And when you get there again, you'll be well packed and well equipped to run the race that I've called you to run. But only that, you have to be in the place that I've called you to be to receive the grace that's necessary from me for you to go out and do what I've called you to do and to be what I've called you to be. And again, not only you, but others will see. It's done and so. In Jesus' name, love you, buddy. You're so good. You're so worthy. You're so mighty. If you've never made Jesus Lord of your life, you've been to pray with you today, you can come down. If you've never rededicated, if you have not been walking with the Lord and you want to rededicate your life, you can come down. I'll be glad to pray with you. Filled with the Holy Ghost. I'll be glad to pray with you. The altars are open. We just want to thank God for his victory. Thank God for the liberty. Thank God today. Are you victorious? Have you been healed? Have you been delivered? Have you been, according to the word, we got a great benefit package. I am redeemed this morning. It might be cloudy and gloomy on the outside, but greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Amen. Continue to be faithful. Continue to be patient. Yes, to just do what God's called you to do. Thank you, Father, and praise your holy and mighty name for my brother. And your hand upon him. Yeah, because wherever he goes, you with him. Because you don't live out here in the field. You live in his heart. So we thank you right now today that only you moving, as he's requested this morning, healing it is what he is dealing with in Jesus' name. But there's other things going on. There's other things. See, the Lord is plenteous in mercy and always ready to forgive. You never have to have a concern about going to God. You got Christians that are self-righteous and condemning. I've had even people to tell me, I'm just going to turn you over to God being mean. And my first thought was, thank you so much. There's nobody you could turn me over to greater than God. For his love never changes. It never fails. He's always for me. And even if I miss it, he's where I go to get straightened out. So we thank you that you're leading, guiding, and directing, and you're helping him right down in here. Leading, guiding, directing, and you don't look down on him, but the only reason you look down is to lift him up. So lift him up, and we thank you for that anointing. We thank you for the hand of God, and we thank you led day by day and step by step right back into the way you've called him to. 
and not his worst, but his best days are yet ahead of him. In Jesus' name. Love you, buddy. Thank you, Lord Jesus, and praise your holy and mighty name. God is good. Amen. Is he worthy to be praised? Is he worthy to be magnified? I want you to know something. You can praise God in your car. You can praise God in the house. You say, I don't have the presence of God in the house. What are you doing? Praise God. Get up in the morning time, sleep in your eyes. Thank God that he woke you up. Thank God Jesus saved you, healed you, delivered you. Thank God no matter where you go, you got a helper in the Holy Ghost. Amen. You say, I'm in a bad, you got help. You got help. We got the Spirit of God. He's our helper. He brings things back to your remembrance. He lead and guide you where you are. He'll even show you things to come. All the present, past, and future is covered. God's got you if you'll trust him. We love you. We appreciate you. Are you glad you came this morning? I pray that you kept going until you got a note of victory. And if not, we will not lock the Holy Spirit in the church. You, you can take him out there with you. Amen. God is with us. We love you. We appreciate you. Hey, ride this evening, I believe. If you're helping in the fall festival, we'll meet with Miss Morgan here right after church. And you are dismissed.